Hello people. Please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. So it's time to replace that bilge pump. I'm going to show you how we do it. Stick with me. So, <laughs> who hasn't opened a hatch and looked in their bilge and saw some fun like this? Horrible, scary stuff. Let me clear this stuff off. But this is kind of the, some of the stuff we're going to talk about. You know, <clears throat> it had the right intentions, you know, trying to waterproof it. But, you know, there's better ways. And get this stuff cleared off and so anyway I like to go with something like that it's a little more compact and when we do one the other thing you're going to contend with is you're usually going to be working through something like this and what I recommend doing you know you're trying to get both arms down in through a small hole a lot of times so what I this is just an example but a lot of them have a wider flange so what I recommend take the screws out get this thing out of the way so instead of working through this size hole you're working through a much larger hole and it, it makes a difference it really does you might not think so until you pull it out and you wish you did it earlier so I'm gonna make some more make access first is where we're going with this now the other thing that can make things a little easier on you is maybe you have you're replacing a, a bilge pump that has held up well for you. You're happy with it, but it's just time to replace it. So one little trick you can do, now again, this is, you know, you're doing the work yourself, you know what's going on. If the base is in still nice shape and not damaged, you can save yourself a lot of aggravation by buying the exact same pump that was in there. So the base stays in. And basically what we're dealing with is this and the hose connection and then you just pop it in because a lot of times just it doesn't seem like much but when you're working down in a hole getting these screws started or pre-drilled in just the right place a lot of times you'll drill them fine at the right depth and everything but then when it's time to get the screws started this little guy drifts around a little bit sometimes you're working in you know an inch of water and it can be a little tough sometimes so that's one of the tips possibly go back with the exact same pump you have if the base is reusable that way you can just snap it in put this guy back together okay now the other thing to keep in mind I like to do all the wiring I can up out of the bilge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the wiring up through the hatch and I'm going to work on it all out here. Whether that means bringing the, bringing the boat wiring out through this hole, which is, is more likely the scenario. So this will be the boat wiring coming out. And you're going to do all your connections outside of the hole instead of trying to work inside and then you can tie them up okay <clears throat> now the one thing I won't do out of the hole is do the final tightening of the hose clamp because this is what what can happen you got that on there you snug this clamp down and you do this out of the hole where you can reach it and access it like I'm explaining. But what you have to watch is you may get it all 
snug down tight out of the hole. And then when you go to put it in its strainer basket, maybe there's the hose isn't twisted right. So it wants to roll over on you. And there's a constant load on it to want to just flop out of it, flop out of the, the holder. So what I like to do is get the pump nestled down in the strainer basket and then manipulate the hose to where it's laying natural so there's no hard kinks wanting to flip it one way or the other. The same thing goes also, this is a real flexible hose. You may be dealing with a very rigid hose and if you are mounting a new pump, in that case you want to put the hose on and let the pump sit in the boat and see how she wants to lay naturally. A mistake some people can make is they lay it exactly like they want it, but then when the hose is on it, this you know, if it is a stiff hose, we can have that same situation where the memory of the hose is really prying the pump around in an awkward position. So that's those tips. Hose positioning, make sure it's relaxed so it's not stressing this. You're going to want to make sure this is totally clean in here. Uh, I was on a client's boat three days ago doing the uh, video and photographs for the listing on it. Nice uh, 33 Tierra. And we were talking and he said he came down to his boat and it was sitting real low in the bow. And he was knew that wasn't right and he got in the boat pulled the pump out and I even said it before he did I said it's probably a screw or wire tie in the builds and sure enough he had a, a screw that was in the impeller of the of the pump but it didn't jam the pump the the pump still turned but it made the pump cavitate where it couldn't push water so the pump was coming on it was running it was submerged in water so it didn't burn up but it was cavitating and wouldn't push the water out and he had a big build up of rainwater. Okay, so we know how to mount the pump. The next thing, everybody goes to the auto parts store and sees these and maybe that's all you have available. <clears throat> but there, there's a better way and I'll do one of them for you. We're going to do the same type of connection except we're going to anything below anything on the boat you really should be using a connection like this and it has the heat shrink compound already on it and it really works out slick this is your brown with your white which is going to be your switched on so just slip that on it's already spliced back and we're going to crimp it in this area of the crimper. We're not going to use that because that's going that would puncture a hole and kind of ruin our waterproofing. So on the flat area, we're going to stick that in there, squeeze it down. She's firm on there. And then we're going to take this little guy. You can use a lighter. I use this just because a lot of times there's wind. And you're going to warm that up. You know, like my buddy Cliffy says, make it ooze. And not only is it shrinking down, a little bit of fire there, but it'll actually, you'll see it bubble up and ooze out of there. So now that it's shrinking down, it's actually bonding onto the insulation and making a totally waterproof connection. Okay. You got it mounted, you're going to use waterproof connections. The other thing I recommend, it just makes, it, just makes such a nicer job. And, and you can get this anywhere. Actually, I picked this up at Napa just because I was on a service call and they were close to finish the job. You can run all your little wiring in the split loom. And it just makes for a nicer job. And two, it helps protect it. 
against a who knows what's in your builds. Like some of those pumps you saw, <clears throat> they had gas on them from a fuel water separator that leaked. They had oil on them from an inboard boat. I mean, there's just all kinds of nasty stuff happens down there. So you can put the split loom on, makes a nicer job, just cleaner, couple wire ties, and you know, it's set. Tie it up high, your connections on the end, and it, it's really simple connections. The one with the white tracer, that is your switched power on. In other words, that's the one that goes on your dashboard or toggle switch, that's switched. This goes to negative, the black, any negative, negative ground of the battery or bus bar. And this is your, the plain brown, and th these colors are universal too. The plain brown, this is your full-time automatic. So this gets a continuous power source. And we'll talk about that in a second. What I like to do, waterproof inline fuse, pull this out. And it takes just a standard ATC, ATO blade fuse, plugs right in there. <clears throat> I recommend put a little dielectric grease on there, put the fuse in, a little more dielectric grease on top. It goes in, it's got a nice little mounting tab, you can screw it or wire tie it. Now I'm going to go into this a little bit. You're going to read your pump 1.5, I don't know if you can see that, 1.5 amps. Use a 3 amp fuse. That's under ideal situations and like I said, I'm just telling you what I do. You you know, you can follow the manufacturer's recommendations, but I've been on plenty of boats that are taken on water. I've been in plenty of scenarios of raising s sunken boats. And under those conditions, <laughs> when you need your builds pumped the most, they aren't ideal conditions. This thing could have a heavy buildup of slime and sludge in it, so it's going to be drawing more power. Secondly, it's probably been running a long time, it's going to be drawing more power. And your batteries are probably at a lower level because the pumps have been working so hard to try to keep your boat floating for whatever extensive circumstance you have. Heavy rains, through hull fitting broke, whatever you have. What I do is I always go up from the recommended fuel fuse size because the last thing you want is to have your 3 amp fuse in there and your boat sinking whether you're caught in a storm or you're at the dock and a through hull broke you don't want your 3 amp fuse blowing because your pump is drawing 4 or 5 amps because your batteries are low, the voltage is lower, it, the pump's a couple years old now, and your 3 amp fuse blows and you're going down. So just my recommendation, go up a little bit and I go up a little bit in the size of fuse just to take in consideration it's probably not going to be ideal circumstances when you need your builds pump the most. So that's it for some of the little tips. One other thing, this is something I've seen from time to time. The pump's in, everything's working, you're checking it, it's pumping fine, or it's running fine. You're through haul fitting. I don't know how many times I've seen down in there where it reduces down, a little critter will get in there and make a mud dauber or whatever. And the pump can function fine, but the water can't get out. It just pushes up against it, pushes up against it, and just runs and runs and runs, and your boat's still taking on water. So after you do your builds pump installation, put a little water in it, 
and actually see water discharging to verify that everything is functioning. Well, that's it for bilge pumps. Again, feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe.